What's going on, everybody? It's Wade with Swamp Donkey Archery. Did you just key in that search bar up there? How to fletch arrows? Cool. I'm about to fix you up. Are you just one of my loyal fans? No, that's not going to work. <laughs> So, era building. Era building nowadays is such a controversial subject. There, there's as many, there's many different ways to build eras as it is to, I don't know, cooking steaks or driving styles, anything like that. And everybody thinks that their way is the correct way. And if you do it any other way, you're stupid. So, I'm not here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you how I build mine. Um, specifically, just you know how I fletch them, how I figure out what direction helical I'm going to run on them, if I'm going to run any at all, and, you know, uh, like how long I'm going to cut them and stuff like that. So, we're not going to try to get super detailed in it. I'm not going to go into a lot of FOCs and stuff like that. Um, these areas that I'm building are going to be for my wife's uh, tournament rig. So she's going to be shooting this uh, this Athens. Let me get the bow real quick. This Athens Ridge 34. She's going to be shooting this bow. It's set on 50 pounds. Well, actually, I think we got it backed off a little bit. We're probably closer to 47. And, uh, I mean, it's just going to be a tournament rig. We're not going to be trying to kill a deer with this. We're strictly shooting foam with this bow. And the ASA actually went up a little bit on uh, speed this year. In her class, she shoots uh, Women's Hunter. We can actually shoot close to uh, 280 feet a second. I'd set her bow up last year to shoot the 240 or 260. I think it was 260 last year. So the areas I built for her last year was shooting right at 260 feet a second. So I'm wanting to build her some lighter stuff this year to gain her a little bit of feet per second. So what we're going to go with is going to be these uh, Victory, it's the 3D HV. And I got these in a 500 spine. And these are these are really light. I wish I had wrote down what the uh, range per inch were. Look and see if they were on here. Um, they were super, super lightweight. So the total weight of one of these errors is wrote right here. Uh, the total weight of one of these shafts is 158 grains uncut without any tips knocks or anything and she's only shooting 50 pounds just just under 50 pounds so you know if we can get her shooting you know around the 200 and 250 grains 250 to 300 grains uh that's going to get her on up there closer to the uh 280 feet a second so that's why i'm building these uh, I'm going to show you what I do to prep them and you know the veins we're going to run and everything so the veins we're going to run this year I'm going to run these uh, for her we're going to do these bow hunting uh, x3 we're doing the uh, green and purple to match the green and purple strings uh, I've got a green and purple jersey coming and stuff like that so I'm going to try to stick with that theme uh, probably going to run these black knocks on them and these victory are pretty cool because did I not? I don't guess I laid out the uh, the tips. It's got some tips that's uh, it's a little over 100 grains down to like 80 grains. It's got breakaways on it. Let me see if I'm. All right, sorry about that. I thought I had these actually laid out here with the fletchings and not. So the tips that we're gonna run are these tips right here. They are a. 
I think they go from 100 down to like 80 or something like that. So these are actually some breakaway tips. Really, really cool little deal right there. It's got where you can break away some of this weight right here and change your uh, your tip weight. So that's really cool. Um, so what I'm fixing to do, we're fixing to, uh, I'm gonna cut one of these off pretty close to the length that I think she's gonna need. I'm gonna put one of these tips in it. And first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna shoot and get her speed close to what we're gonna need to do. Uh, we're gonna see which direction the arrow is rotating naturally, bare shaft. That's gonna dictate what uh, what direction I put a, a slight helical on. And uh, we're gonna kinda go from there and see how it goes. Okay, so these Victory 3D HV in 500 spine, uh, they come with the, uh, the little bushing and uh, oh, these little knocks. Let me get it up here where you can see it. Sorry, I got these big fat fingers. So when it comes to putting these bushings in, some people glue them and that's fine. Some people just shove them in and you know they come out after a little while. But the thing with these little the little knock bushings is if you happen to bust your knock and you booger one of these bu bushings up rather than boogering your air up, that bushing's ruined. And if you glue it in, it's a hard time getting that thing out. So a little trick I learned from a good friend of mine is you take like a bag, one of these little like Walmart bags or just the little plastic bags and you put your air in the bag like that. Like I usually do two layers and you take the bushing and you stick it in here like that and you push it in and you let the bag take up just enough slack that it's not glued in. It's not going to come out either. So, and, and what's really cool is if it's if any of the bag hangs out, you can peel it off with your hand, or you might hit it with a lighter real quick or something and burn it off. But that's a nice, clean install right there. You get the bushing in, you can get it out, take the knocks, you put the knocks in. I always try to lube the, uh, the knock itself up somehow, dip it in some, uh, like, alcohol or something, So or just lick it. I always just lick mine. Just a little bit of lube, and you can... Slide that bad boy on there. Use your a uh, a little knock knock twister and make sure you got it shoved all the way down in there without messing it up. And you got a nice clean knock install. All right, so continuing on. Now that I got the knock and the knock bushing in. Uh, these victory errors are supposedly spine aligned. Uh, they're built and uh, painted with the spine in the same place on that. So from what I'm reading, the spine, I believe, is supposed to be like where the point of all this paint is. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and twist my knot facing the same direction that that... Uh, spine is and then I'm going to shoot it through the bow I'm going to see what direction it rotates and I'm also uh, going to see if it likes shooting better spine up or spine down shooting shooting through the paper and then I will fletch every fletch everything out from there so I'm fixing to see what length I want to cut these off we're going to put some weight in it and we're going to keep on building all right, so I'm gonna start, well, that's crooked. I'm gonna start by building, cutting this first one off at like 28 inches. She could actually shoot a little shorter air, but I was running into a situation last year where when I cut it off a little too short, the air was a little too stiff. I was trying to get her all the speed I could out of it, but the spine and length and stuff like that, you can get into a whole nother, a whole nother situation with that. So I'm gonna start with this one, touch long, kind of see how it comes out. If I need to cut it off some, I will. A uh, longer arrow, you can run a little heavier tip to help with your spine and play with weight and tuning. It's it's a whole lot more to building arrows than just cutting it off as short as you can and 
shooting it. So I'm gonna start with, like I said, 28 inches. Already got it marked, already got it set. We're gonna cut this one off and uh, we're gonna see, glue a tip in, see how it goes. So I got it cut off and I'm fixing to, hang on a second. All right, so I've used this little tool in a few earlier videos. This is a fletched era squaring tool. Uh, you can use it on unfletched errors too. So, but all this is, it is a little bracket made for you to set your errors in. There's a little piece of uh, like, sandpaper right here and it's made basically just to square the end of your air off now with me cutting it off on that uh hopefully you can see it right here with me cutting it off on the little aerosol there uh it's pretty square but i still like to just go ahead and make sure everything's good kind of smooth the smooth the ends off on it and then i'm going to show you how i clean this out clean the shaft out and glue the tip in All right, so I like to use the 91% alcohol and just a, uh, a little Q-tip to clean the inside this air shaft because if you cut it off with a saw or a Dremel tool or whatever, you have a little bit of carbon dust get in here on the inside. And what that'll do is it keeps the glue from gluing the tip to the inside the shaft real good. So I always just take it, clean out that little bit of dust and we're gonna let that dry for a second. While that's drying, I'm gonna get one of these tips out and ready. Like I said, when, when I buy a set of arrows, I like to buy all the components made by that company. Like if I buy Victory arrows, I'm gonna to try to buy Victory tips, the knocks and stuff to go in it. The only exception to this rule is I did buy the uh, the AAE knocks that'll fit these errors only because the uh, the blacks that I wanted to put in here were out of stock. So I had to find something that they had so we get this thing set up. So I'm going to just leave this full weight and I'm just going to stick this in here and I'm going to weigh it and see what the weight of this error is with this tip in here and kind of get a game plan from there. All right, so just from shooting last year, these errors that we were shooting right here, these ultralight gold tips, are uh, like 325 grains. And when I shot these out of her bow, we were shooting about, I want to say, mid 260s or 270s, which means this is close, the uh, 325, but I need to get it down to around 280 to 300 to get it about where I think it needs to be. So just the shaft with the hundred grain, I believe it's hundred grain, let's see. So I don't tell you wrong. No, it's a hundred and fifty grain, hundred and fifty grain uh, tip. Just the shaft and the knot. We're looking at 325 grains, just like it is. And we would add several grains of fletchings and stuff like that. So that tells me I'm gonna break off one of these weights right here and we're gonna try to lighten this bad boy up a little bit and I wanna get this weight down so we can get her speed up. All right, I broke one of the uh, little breakaway weights off which weighed somewhere between 25 and 30 grams. So now we're down to like 290 on just the bare shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in I'm not gonna try to glue it super duper hard because I may have to pull this out. So what I'm gonna do on this one, this is just kind of the experiment era. I'm gonna put just a tad bit of this Gorilla Glue on it. Just like I said, just good enough to hold it in there. And then we're gonna shoot it through the graph, see what our speed is, and kind of go from there. So give this a few minutes for it to, uh, for this tip to dry, which don't take long. These uh, 
This Gorilla Glue is some pretty good stuff. I like to use this Gorilla Glue uh, gel with the blue top. It uh, holds really good for the uh, for the tips. So that's just about already done. So these errors that I got are these uh, 3D HVs. Um, this is like 1,000th straightness. These are some super good feeling errors. All the components are really awesome on it. The, the tip itself uh, is real smooth. There's no, there's like no uh, difference in size in between the tip and the shaft. So we're going to get the graph set up. We're going to shoot it through the graph and I'm going to kind of see what direction this thing's rotating as well. So. All right, so now we're going to see what this bow shoots. So I'm going to look at uh, how I've got this arrow orientated. I'm going to put with the spine up that uh, the little point on the upside and when I shoot, not only am I going to see what the speed is, I want if you if you say this this is point up, and you shoot, and when it hits the target, it rotates this way. It tells you it's got a naturally left spin. Now, if you got it like this and you shoot it, and it spins this way, means the arrow has a naturally right spin. Now, what I like to do is uh, I like to fletch the arrows in the direction that the, the uh, arrow naturally spins. If it has a natural left spin, I'll put a slight left offset or a slight left helical on it. If it spins right, then I do the same thing with the right. So I'm actually doing two things here. We're checking speed and we're seeing what direction it's rotating. Two hundred seventy-six feet a second, and this has a naturally right spin. I was expecting it to have a left spin because uh, most of the errors I've tinkered with had a left spin. So I'm going to shoot one more time, double check, make sure all this is the same. I get a, a repeat on numbers. Yep, got a duplicate. 276. Now I'm going to add a little bit of, uh, add the weight of the fletchings and stuff on it. May slow it down a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build one arrow and we're going to shoot it through the graph and see how much just the weight of the fletching slow it down. And then we'll go from there. May have to uh, break one more off. I don't know. We'll have to see. So now we know these Victory 3D HV have a naturally right spin. So we're going to fletch it with a right helical or right offset. And the weight is really, really close to where I'm looking for. So now I'm going to show you how I actually fletch them. All right, so here we go. We got the air in the clamp. I like to use these Bitsenberg jigs. Uh, me personally, I like a helical style um, clamp, which is where you can, uh, where it gives it a unnatural. I'm trying to grab one out here real quick. Thought I had one over there. So, a helical clamp actually already has a spin made into it, whereas your straight clamp is like this. My wife does not necessarily like a helical fletched arrow and that's her preference and that's cool and there's nothing wrong with that that's the cool thing about uh, archery you can kind of do your own thing so what i'm going to do i'm going to use a straight fletch jig and we're going to induce a tad bit of offset to encourage this arrow to continue to rotate the direction that it naturally rotates so that's a cool thing all right so I already got the first one glued on. Uh, I think I showed you how I set the jig up right here as far as getting it uh, getting it lined up on the shaft. Uh, my glue, I like to use the old uh, old school, it's this stuff right here, this flesh type platinum. Uh, I buy a big can of it, I thin it down a little bit and put it in here. I call it donkey snot 
go along with my shop. So I'm fixing to pull this off, make sure it looks like how I want it to, which it looks like it's not quite centered up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I don't like how it sits on the shaft. It sits a little too far over. So we're gonna scrape that off, move everything over, and then uh, we're gonna... Now, what I did forget to mention that I left out is I always prep my shafts with uh, a little bit of acetone. So I'll put a little bit of acetone on the rag here. And then I clean the shaft right where I'm going to be uh, gluing the fletching on. And that removes any oil or any kind of contaminants that was on it that would impact how uh, how the fletchings actually uh, adhered to the shaft. So we got that off. I'm going to start back over with this. We're going to get another one of these green fletchings because I think I'm going to do a green for an odd and then two purples. I'm going to line it up on this mark right here because that's, that's just where I like to run these fletchings. I hold that right there where you can see it. Run me a little bead down it. It's hard to do holding it away from you like that. Kind of get everything even. I'm going to move everything in just a tad because I forgot to do that. So about there. And I'm just about right, oh, that's too much. About right there. Let's see what this looks like. like. That might sit a little better on the shaft. I ain't got it glued all the way down on it, so. I'm just trying to get everything lined up. That looks, whoa, bet y'all. About lost your belly like a roller coaster on that one there. Sorry, I got a bunch going on right now. All kind of technical difficulties. So I kind of like where this is. Slide this one over just a tad bit more, about right there. Tightening this down. It's easier after this. I've been uh, fletching left helical shafts for a while on larger diameters so i kind of got to get this reset so sometimes you have to do one or two sacrifice one or two fletching in order to get it centered and set the way you want it set so now we're going to let this set and pull it off check it if it looks good then we're going to rotate her on out all right we got her all built now um so like i said we did the straight clamp with a touch of a right hand offset uh, cut the air off to about 28 inches I did wind up taking one more uh, one more section of the tip off of here to lighten it up a little bit more so let me get the uh, chart real quick we'll tell you what the uh, what the weight is all right so we got her all finished up we wound up doing the right offset just a tad, uh, the right, the straight clamp, right offset. Got everything centered up on the shaft, looking pretty good. Uh, I did weigh it again. Decided I wanted to take one more piece of the uh, of the shaft off. So now we're looking at weighing 290 grains. So now we're fixing to shoot 290 grains out of the 47 pound, 27 and a half inch draw, bridge 34 on my wife's. So let's see what we're gonna do with that real quick. Get my release. Let's see what we're gonna do. Two seventy six. Do one more time. 
just to verify. I was wanting it to be right there at that 280 mark. So that's pretty darn close. Two seventy seven. I'm good with that. Probably uh, tweak it a little bit, maybe add half a round to her limbs after we shoot for a little bit, get them old muscles built back up, and we'll probably have her touch over uh, touch over two eighty. So that was the goal. Like I said, this is not a hunting error. It's going to be a three D tournament error. We're needing to keep it in two hundred eighty foot a second range. So that's how I build them. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tune the bow, make sure, see if I need to tune it with a cable rest or anything like that. That's another story for another day. So just want to show you how I set up and built my arrows. I guess that's about it. Y'all got any questions or anything, hit me up in the comments down there. Be sure to follow me on my social media platforms, Swamp Donkey Archery on Instagram and Facebook. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Y'all have a good one. Wake Swamp Doggy Archery. Mm -hmm.